The Batmobile went from looking like a sweet looking car to a tank, back to a sweet looking car. We've been lucky enough to film some of these in person, so we have exclusive footage coming up. Welcome to Explained. Let's start from the beginning. For many, Adam West Batmobile was the OG Batmobile. It looked like a spaceship, but similar enough to the cars at the time to feel relatable for the viewers. This was Adam West Batmobile from the Batman TV show in the 1960s. It was a different time when Batman looked like this. Despite looking like the awkward kid at an elementary school costume party, it was the start of something special. The car had oil squirters and nail spreaders on the back, smoke screens, a bat chute and rocket launchers. The car was based on a 1955 Lincoln Futura, a concept car representing what Lincoln thought the car of the future would look like. We all know how that story goes. With the Futura as a base, the Batmobile was designed on top of it in only three weeks. The producer, William Dozier, called me from 20th Century Fox. He says, we're doing a Batman TV show and we'd like to create a Batmobile. Now you got 15 days and $15,000. That's the way of it, 15 days. But the challenge is worth it. So I said, let's go for it. The iconic OG Batmobile was sold in 2013 at an auction, forget this, $4.6 million. The Batmobile after that was Michael Keaton's Batmobile in the 1989 movie Batman. They actually got so caught up in the design that it was only after moulding the body that the director of the movie, Tim Burton, said, um, guys, where's the door? I forgot. I never thought of the door. <laughs> One of the designers had been on a Harrier jump jet where the top slides forward, so they ended up doing a sliding hood, which is cool. But when designing it, they didn't account for Batman's ears. So when they first tried to close the hood, Batman's ears were sticking out. Now it was too late to redesign the Batmobile, so they actually had to remake Batman's costume with slightly shorter ears. The turbine look at the front of the car was inspired by the land rocket cars you see whizzing around the desert. The headlights were literally from a Honda Civic, flipped upside down, inspired by the designer's wife's own car. It had Ferrari taillights because they wanted round taillights at the back. Two Browning machine guns, one on each side, grappling guns and a jet engine. Even though this was the second official Batmobile, it created a base for all of the cartoons and video games that came after. I need a new car. Van Kilmer's Batmobile came six years later in the movie Batman Forever with a similar shape. It had three bat wings with a huge one at the back, 3.2 meters tall. Random fun fact, the car was actually inspired by a leather fetish magazine. It was meant to look and feel more like an animal, like something that was living and breathing. This Batmobile could crab walk, helping it dodge rockets and bullets. It also had a rear view camera, which was way ahead of its time. Under the car was a type of rocket that would lift the front, which combined with its grappling hooks, let it drive up walls effortlessly. And this time around, the iconic jet engine in the back was much, much more powerful. We used a hot air balloon motor for the flame. In order to get the, the flame to, to extend, we used propane with nitrous oxide. In 1997, it was George Clooney's turn to play Batman in Batman and Robin. It was similar to the previous model, but had lighting everywhere, and the front hood got even longer. The car has so many batteries with all the neon that we run on it, up in here on the side panels, LEDs. It had a rotating glowing turbine in the front, a live video chat device in the car, and what we all love, an ejector seat. The now even more iconic singular centered jet engine was replaced by several fire spitting exhausts on each side of the back. As cool as it was, this seems to have been one of the more forgettable Batmobiles. Fast forward to almost 10 years later, the Batmobile was completely redefined. Everybody had always seen the Batmobile as a sporty, sleek vehicle, kind of futuristic. But all that changed in 2005. Batman Begins debuted with Christopher Nolan as director, Christian Bale as the new Batman, and the Tumblr as the new Batmobile. Fun fact, there's actually an abandoned tumbler in Dubai, completely covered in sand and paw prints from stray cats. The tumbler is most people's favorite Batmobile. It was the first time in a long time that a Batmobile actually felt believable. We went away after and said, you know what, we can run with this. Let's make a hundred mile an hour 
beast that can jump through the air, land, carry on driving. We tried everything we could to make it in, as indestructible as we could. It felt like both a tank and a supercar at the same time and genuinely felt intimidating. Like seriously, if you saw this thing chasing after you, you knew you were in trouble. It had a rocket launcher, explosive spike strips, machine guns, huge off-road tyres, an EMP. The only thing not that believable was the stealth system, where basically the electronics on the car turn off and the entire police fleet magically lose track of him, despite literally being inches away from him and having a helicopter above. But if I had to pick one Batmobile, this would be the one for me. 11 years later, Batman vs Superman came out and again the Batmobile got a noticeable facelift. This version felt more like a mix of all the previous Batmobiles. It was like getting the tumbler, putting it on a diet and giving it that elongated shape from the earlier movies. It felt more like an armoured, agile off-road car. Sergi actually got to drive one in Dubai and the one he drove is surprisingly road legal. The car comes out with a rocket, which he also tested out. The way the doors open is super cool, kind of like a Suicide Gull wing door hybrid, and the car also sounds absolutely insane. Let's press this button, the big red button. Ready? Random fun fact again, the wheels at the back weigh 500 kilograms each. Lastly, we have the latest Batmobile in 2022's The Batman, aka Robert Pattinson's Batmobile. This has got a lot of mixed reviews because unlike the previous Batmobiles, it seems like Warner Brothers stepped away from crazy over-the-top concepts and focused more on something realistic. The car itself is actually a 1969 Dodge Charger with a huge exposed V10 engine sitting on the back. I actually got to go see it in person in Dubai. It's meant to be Batman's very first Batmobile that was basically built by the Bat himself. The story is that back in the day, Bruce Wayne would participate in street races, fast and furious style, and would make some extra money. Extra money meant he could upgrade the car further and win more races and make more money and rinse and repeat, and eventually he started adding bulletproof panels, guns, and everything that the 2022 Batman needed to fight crime. What you get is a heavily armoured, souped-up Dodge Charger with a roll cage and a Ford Triton V10. What do you guys think about this latest Batmobile? What do you think the next one will look like? Let us know in the comments section. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe.